right, guys. We gotta go to bed soon because we're getting up very early and I'm gonna teach y'all how to catch snakes. Tell us a campfire story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But just you have to understand, a story told next to a campfire has to be scary. No, has to be terrifying. So I hope you can handle it. <laughs> Once upon a time, in woods just like these, on a night just like tonight, there was a snake. And this snake... Hey, wait, wait, okay. I heard that black snakes are good to have around because they eat other snakes. Okay, I've heard people say that too, but there's no certain snake that we call a black snake. Let me explain it this way. The black snake is, what exactly is a black snake? Well, it's basically a snake that's black in color that people don't really know what it's called, so they call it a black snake, okay? Uh, here in Georgia and the Southeast, we have several different snakes that can be black in color. Now, most of the snakes that I know of that people would call black snakes, let me see if I can get them off this tree here, are not completely black. This is probably the most common snake we get calls about. This is the rat snake. This is the black phase of the rat snake. Some people call it a black rat snake. Really great snake to have around. Then there's the black racer. Even the black racer has a little bit of white under his chin. And the eastern indigo snake, which lives in southeast Georgia, mainly has like a reddish orange brown color under the chin and on the sides of the head. And then you've got your ring neck snake, which is can be black with a yellow ring around his neck, and then our rat snakes. So even these guys are not completely black. They're mostly black, at least this black rat snake is. Now, people think that this is a good snake to have around. Those people are correct. They also may think that this snake is a snake eater. If it finds a copperhead in your yard, it'll kill it and eat it. That's not true. This is not a known snake eater. Sometimes people see pictures of uh, black king snakes, which live in north, uh, northwest Georgia, and they mistake those for maybe a rat snake, or they see a black racer and mistake that for a rat snake. But this rat snake is not a known snake eater, so we don't have a species of snake known simply as a black snake. What we do have are many different species of snakes, and a lot of them can be black in color. Some of them eat other snakes, and some of them do not. So, back to the story. On a night just like tonight, in woods just like these, there was a snake. And was this- Was this a poisonous snake? <laughs> you mean venomous? What's the difference? Well, there is a difference. See, look at it this way. Uh, if you bite it and you get sick, it's poisonous. If it bites you and you get sick, it's venomous. That just makes no sense. Okay, let me explain it this way. Um, you all know what poison ivy is, right? This is poison ivy. You notice I'm holding it with a glove. Now, poison ivy is very different from venom. It doesn't have a mouth to bite me with, and no matter what I do to it, it's never going to leave where it's at and come over to me to give me its poison. In order for me to get the poison from the poison ivy, I have to touch its leaves and get the oil on my skin, or I could eat it, or I could set these woods here on fire, and then as the wood burns and the plants burn, the smoke from this plant inhaling it would be really, really bad. So poison is very different from venom. This is the world's largest toad. This is the cane toad, also known as the marine toad. It's native to Central and South America, but it has been introduced to Australia, parts of the Caribbean, and is now showing up in Florida. Now, this toad is not venomous, of course, but it is poisonous. So what does that mean exactly? It means that if this toad were to bite me, <laughs> nothing would really happen. But you see this big lump right here on the side of this toad? That's the paratoid gland. That contains poison. When this toad feels threatened, he'll secrete poison from the glands. It, it looks like kind of like a milky substance. And if you were to get that on your skin, or get into your eye, or get it in your mouth, it could be really bad. And one bad thing about this toad is if your dog happens to see this toad hopping across your yard and he goes over to play with the toad and puts his mouth on it, the poison from this toad 
could possibly kill your dog within as little as 15 minutes. So this is a poisonous toad, not a venomous toad. Very different. This is a copperhead, a venomous snake. In order for this snake to hurt me, he's got to bite me and inject venom into my body. Now, what would happen if the venom just got on my skin, kind of like poison ivy or the poison from the toad? Right here is a little drop of venom. It's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Now, if I take that venom and put it on my finger here, until my finger is a little wet, and that's got venom on my finger. But this is not poison, so there's no reaction to this venom being on my skin, like poison ivy would, or the poison from the toad. But this venom needs to be injected into my body. If I had a cut on my finger or part of, part of my body, then having this venom in me would be a really bad thing. But just having it on my finger, not really gonna hurt me at all. So in order for something to be considered venomous, it has to have some type of mechanism to deliver its toxin. That could be the fangs of a venomous snake, or it could be the stinger of a wasp or scorpion. Okay, okay. So there were some woods, and the woods were dark, and in these dark woods, there was a snake. Oh, and this, oh, oh. do you have a snake question again? No. What, what? Um, can I go to the bathroom? Yes, okay, your bathroom's down there by the pine tree. All right, whoa, whoa, whoa. Number one or number two? Mm. Oh, never mind. Your bathroom is way down the hill, way down the hill by the big oak tree. Listen, whatever you do for the rest of your life, don't ever go down the hill by the big oak tree, okay? All right, all right, here we go, really quick. All right, so there were some really dark woods, and in these dark woods that looked just like this, there Wait, was a snake. Was it a big snake or a baby snake? It was a big, gigantic, dangerous but wait. snake. What? I've heard that baby snakes are actually more venomous than adults. Well, a lot of people do think that, but but really try to think of it this way, okay? <laughs> this is a baby rattlesnake. It's a baby, but it's still very dangerous. And this is an adult rattlesnake. So which one would be worse to get bit by, the baby or the adult? So let me try to explain this to where it'll make sense. So let's say this represents the venom gland of an adult snake. The venom gland is where these snakes store their venom. This little jar will represent the venom glands of the baby snake. So here I have a full jar of venom. Okay, it's not venom. <laughs> this is just bleach. But I wouldn't want to get bleach in me, just like I wouldn't want to get venom inside my body either. So today, this is going to represent venom. So we have our adult snake venom gland, and we have our baby snake's venom gland. Now this is plain, ordinary water. And this is our bleach. It looks like water but it's very, very different than plain, ordinary water. So now that we've added water to our jars, let's make it a little bit more dangerous So here we have our two venom glands, the baby venom gland and the adult venom gland. This adult venom gland actually has a lot more stuff in it. There's more water and there's more bleach in this big vial than in this little tiny one. This little tiny one has a little bit of water and a little bit of bleach. But because it only has a little bit of water, the bleach in this little tiny jar is much stronger because there's less water in here. So this one is a little stronger than this one because there's so much water. Now, which one of these, if I were to drink them, would hurt me less? It wouldn't be good for me to drink either one of these. Bleach is not a good thing to drink. It can hurt you really bad. But which one would be worse? 
even though the bleach in this jar is more concentrated, there's a lot more bleach in this one than this one. This amount would hurt me really bad. This amount would not be good either, but it wouldn't be nearly as bad as if I drank this big one. This is a juvenile timber rattlesnake, a baby. It's not even a year old yet, but even though it's small, I still wouldn't want to get bit by it. And this is an adult timber rattlesnake. I sure wouldn't want to get bit by this one, but this little baby snake has baby-sized fangs, a baby-sized stomach, and baby-sized venom glands, and eats much smaller prey than the adult rattlesnake does. This adult rattlesnake has adult-sized fangs, venom glands, and a bigger stomach, which makes it eat larger prey items, which takes more venom to kill it. So getting bit by this larger snake would definitely be a lot worse than getting bit by the baby. Some people think baby snakes can't control how much venom they put out, but it's not true. Baby snakes are very much so in control of their venom, just like the adults are. Both of these would be bad to get bit by, but the adult is definitely worse. Alright, blah 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 blah. There was some woods, and the woods were dark, and there was a snake, and this but snake... But wait, does this snake have a family? No, it doesn't have a family. Why would you ask that? It's a lone snake in the middle of the woods, and it's on a mission... Oh, it would be really cute if it had a family. This snake probably has a nest somewhere in the woods full of baby snakes. This is a lone snake in the woods by itself. It's a very dangerous snake, and it doesn't have a family. Oh, what happened to its family? The babies are probably in the nest. Snakes don't make nests. Um, they can make nests if they want to. Okay, listen, some snakes make a nest, some snakes don't make a nest, okay? Here's how it works. When I think of an animal's nest, this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Many birds actually gather materials and build a nest. But do snakes do this? Absolutely not. Well, except for one snake, the king cobra. Now this is not a king cobra, this is a monocle cobra, but the king cobra is the only species of snake in the world that actually builds a nest. They use their body and scrape together pieces of dead leaves in the woods and they build a nest. They lay their eggs and they protect that nest. Snakes we have here in the southeast definitely don't build nests. So when a snake lays eggs, all of these eggs together are called a clutch. Now where does the snake put her clutch if she doesn't make a nest? Well, most of the time they'll go out in the woods and find a nice place under a log where maybe the eggs will stay dry and won't get rained on, but there's enough moisture there and warmth to help the eggs hatch. We often get calls from people who accidentally discover snake eggs in their yard. Leaving those eggs undisturbed is obviously the best option. Sometimes that's just not possible. So when we can, we try to rescue those eggs. Right now we have eggs in the incubator and today they're hatching. I have no idea what kind of eggs they are. I do know they're not from a copperhead, a cottonmouth, or a rattlesnake because those snakes don't lay eggs. I also know they're not from a coral snake. Coral snakes do lay eggs. How do I know it's not a coral snake? Because <laughs> I'm not that lucky. <laughs> so here they are. 18 eggs and one of them is poking his head out. The other eggs, most of them are already slid open where the snake has done that himself. The snakes develop what's called an egg tooth. It's basically a little structure on the end of their nose really and they kind of use it to cut open the egg and then that allows them to just crawl out. Now these are just starting to hatch and I could help them out if I wanted to but we're going to give them the chance to make it out on their own so we're going to check back with them a little bit later but now that he He's got his head out i can tell you this is a black racer yeah a little black racer i love these snakes they are so cool so i'm going to leave them right here cover the eggs back up and i'm going to check back with them all right all 18 eggs have successfully hatched this is incredible and believe it or not these snakes are ready to go. They are ready to fend for themselves right after they hatch. So that's exactly what we're going to let every one of them do. We're going to take them outside. We're going to find a nice place where they can stay hidden really well because there's a lot of things that would like to eat baby snakes like this. And then we're going to turn every one of these snakes loose. Now, if you take a look at this little black racer, 
he's not black. <laughs> he's got a lot of pattern on him, and you don't normally see black racers like this. That's because most people don't normally see baby black racers. Black racers we think about are just jet black, like a flat black color, but that's exactly what happens to these babies as they grow. This pattern you see here will fade and get darker and darker until they're adults, they'll be solid black. Now, you don't normally see black racers out at night. If you look at this snake, he's got really big eyes and they are diurnal. They are visual hunters and they'll periscope, they'll hold their head way up above the grass and they'll visually search for prey. You know, these black racers, they are nippy little things. As you can see, they will bite me, they'll bite each other, they'll bite about anything that moves because they eat a wide variety of prey, including other snakes. Yes, so these are snake eaters. They eat a lot of different things. And so that was one thing that makes them uh, so sought after by people on their property because they'll eat venomous snakes as well. Really, really great little snakes to have around. But let's get them turned loose and so they can uh, stop biting me, stop biting each other. Hello. All right, so my daughter Audrey, she's gonna help release these little guys. So we have this little firewood pile and I think it'll be a great place to turn them loose. They can get underneath here and hide from predators and then whenever they're ready, they can venture out on their own and do whatever little snakes like to do. All right, y'all, I'm really tired. We gotta get up early in the morning. I think it's bed bedtime. Um, are you gonna finish the story? No, I'm not gonna finish the story. You took all the story time asking questions. Listen, take a few minutes, roast some s'mores or something. And then you... <laughs> what are you doing? What's wrong? What's wrong? There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> <laughs>